councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. In Dallas, Texas, three shots were fired at President Kennedy's motorcade in downtown Dallas. The first reports say that President Kennedy has been seriously wounded by this shooting. It is a big idea. A new world order. It was almost as if it were a planned implosion. It just pancaked. Either you are with us, or you are with the terrorists. But I also believe that a lot of gun owners would agree that AK-47s belong in the hands of soldiers, not in the hands of criminals. Guns will be taken, and no one will be able to be armed. We will take all the guns. For many of the police and guard troops, it is an uncomfortable job to do this in an American city. It's global governance at last. Is it one world? The central bank is in charge. But aren't we all just living and dying for what the central banks do? As for me, give me liberty or give me death! The answer to 1984 is 1776. And welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is April 24th, 2013, and we're going to go right into it. Top story headline, Tamerlan attended CIA-sponsored workshop. Now, this is one of the telltale signs of a false flag. You have a patsy, you have a, a trigger man who attended a CIA or FBI event, and this man attended a CIA workshop. Tamerlan attended a workshop sponsored by the CIA-linked Jamestown Foundation. Now, look that up, the Jamestown Foundation, because people will say, hey, that wasn't the CIA. Just look it up, the Jamestown Foundation, you'll find what you're looking for. The Russian newspaper cites documents produced by the Counterintelligence Department Ministry of Internal Affairs of Georgia, wow, they need a, a shorter name, confirming that the NGO fund of caucus held workshops in the summer of 2012 and Tamberlin attended. He spent six months in Dagestan, a region neighboring, a region neighboring Chesnia. The FBI, the FBI interviewed him the previous year, but said it found no evidence that he was a threat. On Tuesday, Homeland Security boss Janet Napolitano said her agency was aware of the trip. But she didn't think it was that big of a deal, just like she didn't think it was a big deal that the Saudi national with the supposed terror threat was kicked out of the country for having a terror threat, even though he was at the Boston bombing. I don't know why you wouldn't think that's a big deal. But yeah, here it is. The guy uh, attended a CIA camp. We heard the, uh, the mother and some other people talking about he was contacted by various uh, alphabet agencies before and after the Boston bombing. But people are acting like that has nothing to do with anything. And I'm not saying, uh, I'm not jumping the gun like many of these other mainstream organizations and saying, hey, these guys did this and they did that and I know this for a fact. I don't know that for a fact, but I do believe this article is accurate in saying that he was in a CIA-sponsored workshop. So definitely keep that under your hat. And we see people like Salon and other people trying to link him to Alex Jones because he likes uh, InfoWars. His aunt likes InfoWars. You like InfoWars because you're watching it right now. But for some reason, if you watch InfoWars, it's a conspiracy website and it has uh, fictional information. No, it has real information. We don't get everything right all the time, but the difference is that we do try. We don't fabricate stuff like pulling empty backpacks out of empty backpacks like some other news organizations do. But we'll give you more on this story as it develops in the coming weeks. Meanwhile, his brother's still in the hospital with a throat wound that he didn't have when he climbed out of the boat and then he had a tracheotomy and now he can't talk, but he's still confessing to a crime even though he can't talk. I'm sure there has something, some laws being broken right there. I'm confident of it. We'll move on to our next article. Chambliss. Law enforcement agency may have known about Boston bombing in advance. Let's take a look at this. this is this is Georgia Senator Saxby Chambliss. There now appears to may have been some evidence that was obtained by one of the law enforcement agencies that did not get shared in a way that it could have been. It, if it, if that turns out to be the case, then we have to determine whether or not it would have made a difference. He told the local news agency there. He said somebody may have dropped the ball. And if somebody did drop the ball, we definitely have to get to the bottom of that. 
because it's a very serious issue when you have a uh, Fed agency that actually has information, withholds it, and meanwhile they want to be quick to blame some people, just like in a 1993 World Trade Center bombing, the Patsy who actually cooked the bomb had enough sense to keep record of his interactions with the FBI, and that's the only thing that really saves his bacon from the fire. But for more on this, we go to a special report from David Knight. Three days after the Boston bombing, the FBI held a press conference and asked the public to help them find two suspects that we now know were the Sarnayev brothers. The FBI had no idea who these people were, yet it subsequently came out that they had been contacted by Russian intelligence in 2011 about the older brother, that the FBI had investigated him and cleared him, and that the State Department denied him citizenship based on that past questioning. And the mother said she was contacted by the FBI about her son and that they contacted him frequently. Yet they had no idea who these guys were in the photographs. Today we are enlisting the public's help to identify the two suspects. These images should be the only ones, and I emphasize the only ones, that the public should view to assist us. For more than 100 years, the FBI has relied upon the public to be its eyes and ears. Hey, are you denying that there's bomb drills Monday morning? We got photographs on Infowars.com, folks, of contracts. Next question, please. Next question. With the media's help, in an instant, these images will be delivered directly into the hands of millions around the world. We know the public will play a critical role in identifying and locating these individuals. After initially criticizing the FBI for shoddy work, Lindsey Graham said it really wasn't their fault at all. It was all due to a spelling error. You know, those weird foreign names? You know, like Gaddafi? Well, it's amazing that they were ever able to even find Muammar Gaddafi, since his name shows up in the press in 112 different variants, according to ABC News. Is the FBI really that incompetent? They needed your help. And they didn't want you to look at any pictures besides theirs. Are they really worse than Keystone cops? Should you surrender your liberties and let them burn the Constitution? The ball was dropped in one of two ways. The FBI missed a lot of things is one potential uh, answer, or our laws do not allow the FBI to follow up in a sound, solid way. To be made safer by these Keystone cops? Or maybe they're not stupid and incompetent. Maybe they're crazy like a fox. They were monitoring him, um, and I know that because... I, um, I used to talk to them. They used to come to our house. The other alternative is that they knew all along and contrived events to create, train, support, and ultimately blame a lone wolf terrorist and his younger brother so they could make themselves look good, justify the astronomical sums of money being poured into homeland defense, and grow their bureaucracies. But to do that, they have to destroy your liberties and transfer even more wealth from Americans to the military-industrial complex and its new profit center, Homeland Security. If you find it at all credible that the FBI and Homeland Security knew nothing about the Sarnia brothers, then it is laughable to give up any of your liberties for security. For the InfoWars Nightly News, I'm David Knight. If you'd like to get a free digital copy of our InfoWars magazine, just go to InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter. It's a great way to spread the truth. All right, thanks for that report, David. That's pretty good. He had uh Lindsey Graham and McCain as those goofy looking cops and that's pretty much what they are they just a lot of these guys they're jokes Lindsey Graham has famously said and I keep repeating it you're an enemy combatant you don't get a lawyer and that's what the uh, the narrative is so great job to David Knight on that report we'll move on to our next article now this is Obama to ban importation of ammo magazines and accessories without congressional approval you know he doesn't need congressional approval to launch his kinetic actions and so to speak so I'm, I'm not surprised at all that he would need uh, congressional approval for this for this so let's take a look what the UN arms trade treaty passed without media fanfare by 154 countries would do is restrict the global trade of, among other things, small arms and light weapons. Opponents of the treaty argue that the loopholes within the new international framework of the global gun control may make it illegal for Americans to purchase and import firearms manufactured outside of the United States. Now we'll skip down past that big block of uh, that big quote down there, and with the stroke of a pen and without any consent of Congress, ATF bureaucrats could make any gun part accessory 
including magazines or ammunition, that were originally manufactured or perhaps even those designed for military use, no longer legal for importation or civilian use. So that is to say if you have a, uh, let's just use what it says right here in the article, if you have a magazine or even man ammunition that's manufactured outside the United States, this could potentially block that. Meanwhile, we see the tighter restrictions on our gun manufacturers here at home. Many st uh, states passing hard legislation on gun manufacturers, forcing them to move to other states, and they want this cut off, completely cut off, from getting international things into our country. So definitely be aware of that. Uh, like I said, it, he's going to use executive orders and other things to bypass Congress, and we've seen him do these things before, so definitely be aware that he's up to no good again. Now we'll move on to this article. Dan Badandi, rock star Dan Badandi, Secret Service tried to block press from bombing questions. Now, those who may be new viewers, you can see it right there. That is the governor right there. Yeah, you can see him right there making that, <laughs> that goofy looking face. That is a, a face after being asked a question by Dan Badandi. The guy's dumbfounded. Can't believe that somebody would dare ask a real question like, why were the loudspeakers telling people not to uh, not to freak out and telling everybody to stay calm before the bomb went off, but then there were no bombs or, you know, there was, there was no bomb drill. And you can see the guy right there in that OTS. We only, yeah, that's the guy right there. The guy in the purple tie who, if we scroll down, we can see him hanging out with Obama as well. Yeah, we keep scrolling down. That's a good look at his face right there. And you can see him. There he is right there behind President Barack Obama. So it has led to speculation by many people, including myself. This guy may be Secret Service or some other higher up, some type of Fed. So actually, now let's go to that piece from Dan Badandi. The world is aware of false flags. Okay, we're not afraid. Okay, we got a constitutional right. We know about the false flags. Okay, we're aware of it. Infowars.com. He's an American citizen. We still have a constitution. Um, they go on Infowars.com. You see contracting. Private contractors, folks, for black factories. Show them the rooftop photos. They were on the rooftops. They were all over the bomb scene, folks. So you're saying these are the suspects? The, the yes. three suspects on these the roof. These are contractors hired by our, our own government, folks. Right here, Infowars.com, you can see the pictures. Those are lies. They deported the Saudi guy right away. The Saudi suspect was deported right out of there. They're not telling you the truth, folks. They're lying. Well, that was my first time seeing that video. Dan was pretty bold. He was talking right into that guy's face, that Secret Service guy. And actually, after this break, after this segment, I'll have Dan Badandi on. We did a pre-taped interview earlier today, so stay tuned after our break for that. That was great. That was, <laughs> let's go, Dan. All right, we'll move on now. Women mistakenly shot at in Christopher Dorner manhunt get $4.2 million. And I will say those women deserve every penny. The only problem with this, you know, it's taxpayer money. I, the women still deserve it, though. But meanwhile, you know, I really wish they had taken out the paychecks of the guys who, you know, were shooting like cowboys at these two, at these two women. So let's take a look here. The city of Los Angeles will pay $4.2 million to the women injured when the police mistakenly opened fire on their truck during the manhunt for Christopher Dorner, a disgruntled ex-LAPD police officer who killed four people in a rampage. Now keep in mind, they opened fire on two women driving a truck that did not match the description of Christopher Dorner's truck. So let's say, you know, I, don't, I can't remember what the particular make and model was, but let's say you're driving a, uh, a Ford, you know, a, a Ford Ranger, 
and the suspected truck was a Chevy Silverado, but you know, they opened, opened fire on you, and you're like, hold on, I'm not even driving the same truck that this guy was allegedly driving. So the ladies get their settlement, the $4.2 million. Now, I do believe it still has to be uh, approved by their city council. I'm sure the city council will, because just the, uh, if, they, if they take this to trial, it's going to be a very expensive trial. So I'm pretty sure the ladies will get the, the money that they deserve, and hopefully it'll keep the LAPD from just shooting at random at people who don't even match the description vaguely. We'll move on now. American Free Press. UK Bilderberg 2013 meeting confirmed, and I love that graphic. <laughs> no peasants allowed. That's pretty much how these people act. So let's take a look right here. An email reply to the AFP, that's the American Free Press, from a Grove staffer in a check of the hotel website's calendar. Confirmed the hotel is booked solid June 5th through 9th. The Bilderberg meeting itself, by all the latest indications, is to take place June 6th through 9th. So if you're in the area, uh, I hope that you are. If you're a listener out there, go out there and check it out. It's going to be June 6th through 9th. These are the latest, uh, the latest numbers that we have available. So if you're interested in going to the Bilderberg meeting, definitely look at hotels locally around that area. I'm sure they'll fill up pretty fast if they haven't already. So go out there. Let your voice be heard. We're going to try to get out there at some point. I'm pretty sure Paul Joseph Watson is going to be there as well. So we'll see. Uh, I'm sure InfoWars will, will be there in, in full effect the best of our abilities. I'm not sure if Alex will make it out this year, but we'll have somebody out there besides Paul Joseph Watson, so definitely be aware of that. Now, people kept criticizing us because we said the things that happened in Boston were going to be used to take our liberties and bring in the police state will bring in a stronger police state, and that's exactly what we see with this next article. Police state measures at Kentucky Derby. Now, I'm not one to brag and say I told you so, but we did. You know, we were, were warning you about this because I even saw on Sports Center on ESPN, they had the two guys sitting up there, the anchor guy, I, I can't remember their names, and they're like, yeah, Janet Napolitano says we need to have more security at these events or more bombs are going to go off. So there you go. They're ushering it in quite nicely. Let's take a look at the things that they want to ban and check and all this. Backpacks, duffel bags, large purses, coolers, camcorders, tripods, cameras with detachable lenses, and numerous other items that will now be prohibited at the annual event that seats 50,000 people. That's 50,000 a day. In addition, fans will be subjected to an electronic wand search, according to the Associated Press. Attendees may also have their cell phones, tablets, and other electronic devices searched. So think about this. You have the Boston bombing, the bomb goes off. You have several people with cameras, cell phones, and what have you around the immediate area. Their devices are immediately confiscated. What was on those devices? I don't know. I don't even know if the people ever got their cameras back. So, you know, heaven forbid there's some type of incident at the Kentucky Derby. Now you'll have less cameras to catch the suspect, but that's okay. They don't care if you don't have a camera because they want more cameras. I was just watching one of the one of the major networks out here on the TV we have in a break room, and she, the lady's walking around, the anchor or the reporter, and she's like, yeah, I'm walking around Boston, and I'm just very concerned that we don't have any more cameras out here. If we had more cameras, we could see everything that was going on. Well, you had plenty of cameras, civilian cameras, uh, police cameras, and what have you, and you still don't have a single image. I've yet to, have you guys seen an image of these guys placing a bomb? Anybody? I, I haven't seen one. As far as I know, Alex hasn't seen, I haven't seen anything of these two guys who supposedly placed the bombs, placing the bombs. But the FBI is telling me, and they're telling you, that don't look at any other images because these guys placed the bomb, even though we don't have footage of them placing the bomb. And, you know, one guy's dead. One guy had a tracheotomy laying up in the hospital bed. But we suspect, because we suspect we have no actual evidence, that this actually took place. That's the justice system in the United States of America. Jordan opens airspace for Israeli drones. Now, I want to keep in mind, I'll just read the last section of this before we even get into it. There has been no official confirmation from any other source. So keep this in mind when we go into this article. Jordan has opened two corridors of its airspace to allow unmanned Israeli drones through to monitor the situation in Syria. The French newspaper La Friago, I'm sorry if I <laughs> mispronounced that, reported on Sunday. The report, based on an interview with a Western military source based in the Middle East, said, and as I said earlier, there is no other confirmation from any other source, so definitely take that with a grain of salt. But, hey, Syria, there could be uh, some drone activity headed your way. It may be a good topic to get Syria girl on about. I'm pretty sure she may 
have a better hand on it than we do here in the States. So let's move on to our last subject of the night. And this is DuPont Abbott investors vote on GM, GMO resolutions. Let's take a look here. DuPont shareholders today will vote on a resolution on genetically engineered seeds, while Abbott Laboratory shareholders Friday will ask the company to remove, remove GMOs from its infant formula and other nutritional products until long-term safety testing proves GMOs are safe. <laughs> I don't think you're ever going to get that... Uh, that turn up. Pharmaceutical and nutritional product company Abbott uses genetically modified corn and soy in its Similac infant formula. So if you have young children, definitely be aware that the GMO is in their baby formula. And it's not just for the kids. I mean, it's in many other products, not just GMOs, but BPAs and other things that are harmful to your bodies. Uh, vaccines, many other things. You know, educate before you vaccinate. I see those big billboards even here in Austin. Educate before you vaccinate. Please do. When you, uh, when you do take the time to educate yourself, I'm sure you will find that these vaccines contain things like mercury. Your GMOs have all kinds of weird stuff. They got the GMO rats. We've shown you several times these rats eat the GMO, then they get all sick and get all these tumors and stuff on them. So I definitely hope that Abbott will vote to get this stuff out of the baby formula. And if you are taking Similac, definitely be aware that it has GMO in it. It's, you know, it's a very serious thing. And educate before you GMO your, your little baby just like they want your baby to drink the, uh, the fluoridated water. I saw that recently when I went to Walgreens. Fluoridated water has a little smiling baby with a pink background, and you know everybody's happy about it. I'm not happy about it, but I guess the, uh, the guys who make the money are happy about it. Now that brings us to the end of our news portion. Let's go to our quote of the day from James Madison. All men having power ought to be mistrusted. That's from James Madison. So that does it for this section of the InfoWars Nightly News. Now, I will be back, as I said earlier, with Dan Badandi on the other side. But in the meanwhile, if you like this broadcast, go to PrisonPlanet.tv. Get yourself a 15-day free trial. There's a lot of great stuff waiting for you right there on PrisonPlanet.tv. You can see it right there. Alex Jones, the Alex Jones radio show, the nightly news, special reports, movies, rants, all the good stuff. Uh, we had some pretty popular rants here recently. Uh, People had some good comments on those on, uh, on YouTube. So definitely check those out as well. So we'll be back right after this break with Dan Badandi. The important thing about the Pro One filter today is that the material we use for removing fluoride and other heavy metals now will remove the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. There's no other fluoride reduction filter out there that will remove that type of fluoride. And it's extremely important because today we're hearing more and more cities are using that form of fluoride. We've been having medication forced on us through the water system for quite a while. Most people don't realize it. Most people don't realize the negative effects of fluoride. There's a wide range of health effects that are attributed to fluoride. Bottom line, why should somebody get this new Pro One Pro Pure filter? The reason to buy the Pro One, it's an all-in-one filter. It's convenient, easy to use. It doesn't require the add-on fluoride filter. And in addition, this filter removes the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. I'm Darren McBreen, and these are some of the new items that are available now at InfoWarsShop.com. Alert the public to Obama's blatant abuse of power with the new Obama t-shirt. Obama's joker face on the front and come and take it on the back. It's time to publicly call him out for what he is, a tyrant. Defend the Second Amendment with our top seller come and take it t-shirts. And look at that, women's cut tank tops and t-shirts now available. Nice hat. Plus, the don't tread on me flag. And now you can become a micro distributor of the InfoWars magazine. Plus, get your own copy delivered right to your door each and every month. And if you're tired like I am of you and your family being exposed to polluted drinking water, get the Pro One High Performance Water Filter. It gets rid of all pathogenic bacteria, cysts, fluoride, heavy metals, and numerous other contaminants. So join the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com.
and welcome back. Our guest tonight is our East Coast correspondent, Dan Bedondi. A lot of people have been asking questions. You know, I want to be like Bedondi. I'm actually hearing people say that now. I want to be like Dan Bedondi. I want to go in there. I want to confront the FBI. I want to confront the governor. I want to confront the whoever. And that's what you need to do. You, know, you don't have to necessarily be as aggressive as Dan is. If you're that bold, if you're as bold as Dan or Alex, that's great. If you're not, he'll give you a few tips on how you can conduct yourself well. So he joins us now via video Skype. All right, thanks for joining us, Dan. Not a problem, Jakari, and uh, what a wild week it was, man. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, and we're going to talk all about that, but first we have this clip of you uh, at the FBI press conference, and you have your photos, and you're actually blocked by some people we believe to be Secret Service, so let's take a look at that clip. Is there really those bombs those Monday morning? We got photographs on Infowars.com, folks. Uh, contracts, private contracts. There's no right to sign any bonds in here. Are both suspects seen pointing these devices at the finish line of the game? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. 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 This is my name. Do you have any information on what he... Sir, can you this address the... Uh, the there are pictures today in newspapers all over the country, including the New York Post, that identify two men as potential suspects. I'm just wondering what it does to your investigation when things like this get out and, and these guys are wrong. wrong. I think I addressed that. No, thank you. I think I addressed that question in my statement by saying the only official photos that should be officially relied upon in this investigation are those. Any uh, 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 we're aware of the lies. We're going to expose your lies. Again, the, the world is aware of false flags. Okay, we're not afraid. Of you, okay, we got a constitutional right. We know about the false flags. Okay, we're aware of it. Infowars.com. He's an American citizen. We still have a constitution. Um, they go on Infowars.com. You see contractors, private contractors, folks, with black back. Show them the rooftop photos. They were on the rooftops. They're all over the bomb scene, folks. So you're saying these are the suspects? Yeah. The yes. three suspects on these the roof. Contractors hired by uh, our own government folks. Right here, Infowars.com. You can see the pictures. Those are lies. They deported the Saudi guy right away. The Saudi suspect was deported right out of there. They're not telling you the truth, folks. That lying. Okay, Dan, we just saw in that clip you were at the press conference and you get blocked by, I saw at least two guys. How many guys do you think it was? Um, well, I, I mean, I seen about three, four guys that like, came right up to me, including one of the high uh, police officers. I don't know what rank he was, but I mean, they came right up to me right away. And, you know, they didn't want this information to be seen. And I actually get the pictures right here. Uh, these are the very pictures that I was showing. You know, yeah, try to try to hold that steady, Dan. Your Skype's breaking up a little bit, but we also have the the images on Infowars.com. Yeah. If we can pull up that article, so people can see these uh, two gentlemen. Like we have pictures of two different gentlemen, and we'll scroll down. We see the governor right there, but we'll scroll down, and you can see right there on your screen. There's one of the guys, and you see another bald guy right next to him, and we'll keep scrolling down. Yeah. And Dan, you'll see, you, yeah, you can see Dan Badandi right there if you're watching on PrisonPlanet.tv. And you can see the same guy at the press conference sitting right behind President Barack Obama. So I definitely say that this guy has it in good with the Secret Service or at least some type of elite protection service, most likely the Secret Service, but you know, he could be something else, maybe some type of uh, FBI or uh, ATF or whatever else. So Dan, we just saw the images and the guy is clearly sitting behind President Barack Obama. Do you think he is a Secret Service agent? Um, most likely, and yeah. well, you know, he's definitely something because you don't sit behind a president, you know what I mean? And uh, but he was giving me this like evil eye, him and the other gentleman next to him. And uh, I, that's when I said, you know, I'm not afraid of you people. You know, I looked him right in the eye, so point my finger, I'm not afraid of you people. And he goes, Well, you should be afraid. I mean, we're not afraid of you either. And I said, Well, you better be afraid of truth and liberty because it's coming your way, you know, and uh, you people going to jail for murder. And you know, and I was just like. I I I I'm let down. I mean, I stood up against these criminals, and so you know, say you know what, we're here for truth. So Dan, okay, let me let me get this straight. He spoke to you and said that you should be afraid. Is that accurate? Oh no, um, he said we're not afraid of you either. Oh, okay. Was, uh, the gentleman next to him said that. Okay. And he just gave me this, uh, you know, the old Secret Service stare, like uh, we're unstoppable, invincible. You know, I'm like, yeah, you're a joke. You know. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> you you sit behind the president in a purple tie, and you know, you think you're. Mr. Tough Guy. Okay, yeah. Dan, so for our new viewers who may not be aware you know, of your whole situation, break down for us briefly. So you go to Boston after, after the bombing at the marathon, and then what happened from there? 
Well, the first press conference, um, you know, I basically asked him about the drills that was reported by um, it was reported by uh, a local 15, I believe, and the bought in uh, the, the you know the uh, the speakers. I think it's the local 15 or the um, Boston Globe. I forgot. Mm-hmm. Um, they were reporting basically about the drills going on that day, and also the you know people on the loudspeaker saying, "Oh, well, it's just a drill. Stay calm." I asked them those questions, and they were quick answer, no. Then I asked in the second press conference, is this a false flag to take our civil liberties? And, um, you know, they said, you know, Patrick DeVoe, no, next question. You know, mm-hmm. avoiding it. And I got it out again. Why are you trying to cover this up? And I asked him, so I, I said right out, it's a false flag. So press conference three, which was Thursday, um, basically I got right up in that, you know, I said, hey, I got the photos. You know what I mean? Who are these contractors in the khaki pants and the khaki boots? Mm-hmm. And I was trying to get these questions out. They were completely whitewashed over me, you know, not even as if I wasn't even there. And when I held these pictures up here, these uh, glossy 8x10s, you know, that's when they all jumped up trying to block the pictures, the guy behind me with his clipboard. But, you know, when the, when the press came swarming over, they all backed off. Now I just want to say it again too. Well, when I when my friend Nick arrived with these pictures for me, um, he gave them to me. The guy behind me told somebody, and um, they went into the back, and uh, they went into the back and said, "Hey, they got pictures." And uh, the coordinator of the conference came out and said that there's um, they got pictures. I mean, I'm, I'm sure she came out to say to the press, "We're going to delay the press for about five minutes." Mm-hmm. And um, when they did that, you know, they came out right away to say, "Ignore any other pictures." Now, Dan, I remember that press conference. I was on the Alex Jones radio show live with David Knight at that time, and we're watching the press conference live, and we hear him say, don't look at any other picture. And I'm like, what? There, there must be several other pictures, if nothing else, of you know different angles of these two guys, the alleged suspects. There are plenty of other pictures out there, but look at nothing else except these two pictures. That's very strange to me as well. Yeah. So, Dan, I have an article right here. If we can do a doc cam, shocking footage, Americans ordered out of their homes at gunpoint. Now, you can see right here in this picture, a guy pointing his gun right at the camera, or should I say the cameraman. And we saw much of this, Dan, not just intimidation like you experienced at the press conferences, but you can see right there on your screen as well, the police going house to house, shoving their guns in people's faces. We also saw the clip of a police officer running down the street. Uh, showing his gun, you know, jamming his gun into people's faces, you know, trying to intimidate them. It's a complete police state going out there, but they don't want to call it martial law. I guess they have some some kinetic action phrase or something like that that they want to call it. So, Dan, w- did you witness any of this? Oh, yeah. I mean, I went over to uh, Watertown as well. I um, mean, after the, you know, the press conference and everything, I went down to Watertown the next day, I believe, and um, it's just been a long week. I'm sorry, man. It's just a lot yeah, of Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and Watertown, they were kicking people out of the homes, not giving them no provisions or nothing. Uh, I talked to some of the you know residents, and they were kicked out, kicked out of the homes, not told what was going on, you know, when they could return. One person asked uh, what the situation was, and they got threatened with arrest. Um, and in, in, in uh, Boston, Mass, there was um, Humvees everywhere, you know, SWAT teams, military. I was following with the camera on the military going in and out of corrals of buildings. Uh, into parking lots, and I was following with the video camera, uh, getting all this footage of them searching, you know, looking at people's car windows, everything. Mm -hmm. And it was a total police state, and it was weird just to be there to witness all this happening. And I'm like, wow. And people, you know, they're, you know, they're clapping after, you know, the suspect was caught, you know. And it's clapping, oh, yeah, they did a great job, these heroes. Yeah. And Dan, let me ask you this real quick, because we saw a report come out earlier this week talking about how people were general, generally satisfied with the way the investigation was handled. Uh, from the people you talked to, and I know you don't claim to know what 90% of the people are thinking like President Obama, but yeah. from just your general feeling being around Boston and in that area, how do you think people perceive the investigation? Well, when I talk to a lot of people, some people were, you know, just nervous about those cops everywhere. Some people were like, oh, I think it's, I, I feel safer, but, you know, they're all over the place. And, um, but, you know, people, were every, you know, a couple of people were skeptic of what was going on, you know, about the bombs. And, uh, you know, when I mentioned the drills to them, they're like, wow, I didn't know that, you know, made them think. And, you know, this is all on record. And, um, you know, I talked to a lot of different people. I was on some liberal show um, Tuesday, the day, uh, day after the bombing, and they're, you know, basically trying to discredit everything. And I'm like, I'm only reporting what you people said. 
You know, this is all a wrecking. Mm -hmm. You know, and you people throw this media out, then you take it down, and you expect people not to uh, pay attention to it. Right. And, you know, it's just, it, it's it's mind control, it really is. And that's what mainstream media is all about, mind control. Exactly. Now, Dan, I know you're eager to get back out on the streets. You have more reports you want to do. So just leave us with your closing comments. Um, I just, again, when I was on uh, AJ show today, um, I just... Now, people always call me a hero and all that, but you know what? All that credit goes to God, bottom line. And uh, and I'm just a small man, you know, I'm just a small man from the smallest city in the smallest state of the country, okay? And I can make a huge difference. That You know, Alex says the resistance is you. You are the resistance. Anybody can make a difference. Again, I live in the smallest city in the smallest state in the country. And I went out there and confronted the globalists, and anybody could do this. And I encourage everybody, don't be afraid. That's people's problem. They, they're awake, but they're afraid. You know, mm -hmm. these Gestapo people, don't be afraid of them. Because resistance is victory. Get out there with the video cameras. You know, people in LA are reporting that they're doing drills right now. I want people mm -hmm. out there with video cameras in Chicago. So get out there with the video cameras. Confront these people. Why are you doing the drills? Go to the press conferences. Ask the officials. Get in their faces. You know, do it nicely, of course. Mm -hmm. You, you want to know why. Citizen journal, citizenship journalism, I'm sorry, I can't talk today, is the most important thing because we want to know the real questions. We want the real answers. Of course, they're not going to give them, but you know what? It shows that, you know, when we're standing up against these uh, cr criminals, we are. We're standing up against the New World Order, and again, I encourage everybody to get out there. If they're running drills, you get out there with video cameras. Don't back down. You know, get out there and ask the real questions. All right. The advice from the man himself, Dan Bedondi. Thanks for joining us, Dan. Thank you, Jakari. All right, and there he goes off to wreck another press conference with real questions. I, I just didn't know that you could end a press conference by asking real questions that the FBI doesn't hand you beforehand on a, on a cue card. But, you know, that's, I guess that's the new system. Anyway, if you like this broadcast and you want to see it continue, if you want to see guys like Dan out there in the field, that takes a little bit of capital. So I hope you suggest, I hope you would take the consideration, I should say, of joining PrisonPlanet.tv. You can get yourself a 15-day free trial. It supports our broadcast, and it has a great archive system for anybody who wants to know more about the InfoWars brand and Alex Jones show, InfoWars Nightly News. It's all right there on PrisonPlanet.tv. And also, don't forget, there's just a few days left. Operation Paul Revere. Over $100,000 in prizes. Check it out, Infowars.com forward slash contest to get your entry in. There's a lot of great stuff there already, but do not be intimidated. You still have time, and who knows? You know, it doesn't have to necessarily be a certain length or over a certain topic. Just anything that's great at promoting freedom. And you can see the, uh, the three prizes, if we can go back up for just one second. Yeah, you guys can see it right there on your screen. Grand prize, $100,000. Even if you have to split that with a couple other people, that's still a whole lot of money. It's a whole lot more than I got paid for the InfoWars reporter contest. I asked Alex if I could enter this one. He said no. So we have to sit it out here at the InfoWars, but you have a chance to win $100,000. So definitely take that into serious consideration. And once again, if you send in a slideshow, you're probably not going to make it. But, hey, your slideshow may wake somebody up, so, hey, send it in anyway. So with that, I'm Jakari Jackson. Great job to the crew. We've been working some long hours here at the Info War with the recent bombing and uh, CISPA and all the other news, the gun news. So definitely appreciate you watching us and supporting us here at the Info War. So I'm Jakari Jackson, and we'll see you tomorrow night.